to shoot. Pull back, step back, three. Bottom! The handoff. Jones for the time. Oh, oh he's fouled! And one! He's still loose. Doherty the heave. Oh, oh my God! Southern Utah. Oh, wow. Southern Utah is going to do something they've never done. What's up, everybody? It is another Whack Wednesday episode of the Straight Out Whack podcast. Again, it is t- it is week two of our team preview weeks as we head into the 2023-24 season. This week, it's the number two teams in the Whack regular season standings from 2022-23. As you can see, I got Daryl with me. He's in sunny California. It was storming here in Utah, but it just became really sunny, so I'm excited about that because I played two softball games tonight. But the weather's going to be cooler, so that's very nice. But with us today, we have new SFA women's basketball head coach, Leonard Bishop. Technically, I mean, do we really want to call you new, Leonard? Because you've been under Mark Kellogg's, you've been the associate head coach since, what, 2015, 16. So you've been at SFA for a long time. So do we really want to refer to you as the new head coach or just uh, refer to you as Coach Leonard Bishop? Uh, we can go with new head coach, uh, you know, again, because I am a first time head coach and it is a little bit different sliding over eight inches. But, you know, again, I, I, I'm happy to be called coach because, again, it's a blessing to do what we do for a living. So whatever you call me, I'm going to respond to. I, I want to know how much nicer it is to be in the big office now over maybe the smaller office because I've been to that practice facility. I've seen those those offices and the view that you get and that head coaching office is unreal. Like, how nice is that? The view is amazing, I would say. Um, but, again, the practice facility itself is, is really, really nice, and we're blessed to have it. So all of the offices in there are nice, and the associate head coach office that I, I previously had was pretty nice, too. So uh, the, the master suite, as we like to call it, is pretty nice of an upgrade, though. So I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you – Were you surprised when you've been with Mark Kellogg for a long time? Were you surprised when he came in, maybe told you, hey, I'm taking the job at West Virginia? Like, what was that? How do you go about that in a situation where you've been with a guy for seven, eight years and you built so much, you've had so much success together? What was that, your your reaction, kind of your, maybe your thoughts on that when that, that came down? Uh, well, my reaction was immediately happy for the guy. You know, again, we've been working together, like you said, since 15, 16. Um, to be honest, you know, he's been knocking on the door. Uh, we, we've been playing well and at a high level for so long um, so that he fi- once he got that uh, Power 5 opportunity, I was just extremely happy for him and his family. You know, over the last eight years, our families uh, have been in the, in the, the foxhole together um, on some, some highs of highs and some lows of lows. So, uh, for him to have that opportunity to go to West Virginia and to coach the Lady Mountaineers, I was extremely happy for him, and that's just kind of immediately where my emotions went to. Is there any chance? Is there any for, chance? What's the biggest that, uh, thing you uh, learned? What's the biggest ahead, thing you Nero. learned ahead, under Nero. Mark Kellogg as you take over the uh, Lady Jack program? Um, uh, well, I'll say two things. Um, the first one being just like his organizational structure of everything that he does. He's really detail oriented, um, so that'll be something that I take um, with me. Uh, going forward just in my professional career and then I'd say just uh, how well-rounded of a person he is you know obviously everybody sees the basketball success but uh, he's successful in his marriage he's successful at home as a dad uh, and he's successful with his friends so you know again uh, that organizational structure that stretches into his uh, personal life as well how he organizes time for his friends and his family so just being able to be a family man in this business some people try to say that it's impossible but i've seen it up close and personal and and how successful he was doing that i have to ask is there any chance of sfa in west virginia playing in the next year or two somewhere there have been a lot of conversations about that on the outside uh me and mark have not discussed that at all um maybe you know we said we want to play each other in ncaa tournament that's what we've kind of talked about so that's our goals for both of us i like it i like it so What's it like for you? Ben? I mean, obviously, you, you understand the recruiting situation in SFA. You understand the landscape. You understand all of that. So you lose, you know, Jordan, Zaya, Angel Scott, 
uh, Avery Brittingham, uh, Mayana Johnson ran out of eligibility, but you still got pieces back that people don't really know about. I don't want to say know about the people at SFA know about them. And I'm sure there's a lot of people around the WAC that know about them, but I mean, you've got some players back. Tyler, Ty, does she go by? Is it McClymont call? Is that how you say the last? You got it. Perfect. That's it. That's it. Okay. She's your lone starter returning. Um, but you got mm -hmm. Kyla deck. You got Kirsten Harden. You got some other pieces back. I mean, how nice is it to have people that have been in the program for a year or two to understand what the mentality is? I wrote about it the other day about that sustained success that you guys have kind of preached. What's that been like, you know, for you so far this offseason? I mean, and you're getting ready to go on a long trip uh, to bond with the team as well. Yeah, it's been great having some of the returners back. Um, I read your article and, um, you know, again, it's been sustained success under Mark Kellogg. And now um, now it's about sustained effort um, and a sustained mentality. You know, we still have to have the mindset you know, like you said, we did we do did lose some really good pieces. Uh, with that being said, we're still going to work hard. We're still going to put the effort in um, to be a championship level team. And so, having people that have been uh, on championship teams and understand what the work looks like day in and day out, um, I do think that is an asset to to adding all these new kids that we have on this year's team. You know, we talk recruiting in your roster. Um, you were hired, you know, kind of towards the back end of the off season window. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you were at a disadvantage when it came to the portal and maybe the life periods, but more more so the portal? Uh, I would say towards the portal, yes. Um, the live periods, no. We've been able to watch some really good 24s and 25s. Um, but as far as this year's coming group, we were a little bit behind on the portal. Um, I'm not going to complain about that because I still got the job to be the head coach of Stephen F. Austin. So I'll take it if they had gave it to me yesterday. Um, so, you know, again, I feel like uh, me and my staff did a really good job of bringing in pieces that uh, fit the pieces that we already had. And so I wasn't looking to make huge splashes, even though I felt like we did get some really good pieces. Uh, I was really just trying to put a team together that would best suit the pieces that we already had. Can you, can you talk about maybe your style that you want to you want to instill in terms of, you know, offensive, defensive styles? I know that, you know, Mark, he liked to press quite a bit and and you know you guys were big a lot and, and kirsten's the tallest player on your roster right now talk maybe is there gonna be a little change in playing style that sfa fans might be looking forward to um you know again i think the way we've played in the past um it it allowed us to play different styles and i think i still want to keep that um so we'll, we'll, obviously with kirsten harden we'll we'll funnel things through her she's the big girl in the middle um but again i think we have pieces now that we can speed the game up if we want to um and then obviously we'll slow it down if we need to to, to get kirsten a little bit more involved but we have pieces that allow us to play uh whatever style of basketball is out on the floor for the, that night so I, i'm excited about that all right leonard i gotta put you on the spot a little bit here so you're going home late at night after ball game. Maybe you have to stop at a convenience store. Maybe it's on your way to practice. What's your like go to snack? Maybe drink when you go to the. Oh, we lost him for a minute there, Daryl. Um, I'm not sure if it was an internet connection. But uh, yeah, we're talking with Leonard Bishop, the SFA women's basketball head coach. You know, the biggest question I have, I mean, he's addressed is, you know, did he feel like he was at a disadvantage based on when he was hired in terms of getting at kids in the portal. And it sounds like he didn't feel that way. Um, let's pull, let's pull him back right now back and, right and now. talk to him. I wanted to ask, I don't know if you heard my last question, but what's your go-to snack maybe on the way to mm. practice, maybe while you're out on the road or something, what's your go-to snack when you go to the convenience store and maybe a drink too. Okay. Go-to snack is going to be some Skittles. Uh, neat. And this is bad because this is all sugar and I need to take as much sugar out on my dad as I can um, but Skittles is the go-to snack and then um, anybody that knows me knows that I, I have to have a coke um, to drink I'm not a coffee drinker so if we have an early morning practice I'm gonna have a coke um, our, our managers they used to give me and coach Kellogg a ton of flack um, because you know we'd be just powering through he drinks diet coke and I drink coke so 
we're on the sidelines in the middle of a game, like screaming for Cokes and Diet Cokes and trying to make sure we have our sugar fix to make sure that we're attentive and, and into the game and engaged with energy the entire time. So the Coke and Skittles are my go-to. Okay, I have to ask, is the is it just the rainbow Skittles or is it the berry Skittles? I mean, there's all kinds of different Skittles now. So I I'm have going to with the you, OG Skittles. I'm going with the red bag, red bag, OG Skittles. Uh, if I want to be weird, I'll separate the colors. But outside of that, it's just uh, <laughs> it's, it's the red ones. And then, then, and the, then, Coke, then the, Coke, the Coke situation, Coke situation. is that from, that uh, from uh, the McDonald's the McDon- Coke or just a regular, just any kind of Coke? Just a bottle, a bottle of Coke, um, 20 ounce, put the top back on it, keep sipping on it as long as I got it. So I wanted to jump back and take a look at your roster. Um, you know, Tyler McClendon Hall, the only returning starter you had, she's kind of had to embrace that leadership role. Um, talk about the job she's done in that regard as you got to work your way towards this Italy trip and towards opening night in a couple of months. Well, yeah, you know, again, Tyler's played a lot of important minutes for us over the last couple of years. Um, So, again, there is a an expectation that she steps into a leadership role. But I don't ask people to step into leadership roles that they're unfamiliar with or that they're not natural. in. so she's been a leadership from uh, just how we do things. She doesn't have to be the vocal leader. She comes in, she gets her extra shots up. She plays hard every possession. Um, and so that's how she's been leading and showing our other girls kind of how we do things at SFA. Um, but again, we have other people on our team. Uh, Kirsten Harden has stepped up her vocal leadership on our team and, and other people, just even some of the newbies have come right in and, and shown vocal leadership skills. So uh, we don't, we don't want to make it uncomfortable. We tell people to be you, be yourself, um, just be the best version of yourself. And if you come in and do that every single day, um, then we, we have something. How, how, Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. Um, and then this Italy trip you guys are going on, um, two games, you get the 10 extra days of practice, right? How helpful will those two, two games be in establishing the product that you ultimately see on the floor in November? Man, I think they're they're crucial for us, if I'm being honest. You know, again, um, it's a new team. Uh, we've been able to practice. We've been able to implement some stuff, um, some of the stuff that we've done in the past, and then obviously some stuff that has just – uh, original to, to our teams and what we're going to do going forward. So um, I think it's uh, it's an opportunity for us to kind of throw out there and see what it sticks. Um, and then obviously for me, being a first-time head coach, I want to be able to uh, learn how to do substitution patterns and how to handle media timeouts and all of those little things. So um, I think this is a really good opportunity for us to have like a dry run uh, before we get into scrimmages and, scrimmages and then ultimately the season. Okay, what is it that you're – and besides the basketball, outside the basketball, what's the thing you're most looking forward to about your trip to Italy? Uh, I, I mean, pizza. we have a pizza-making class on the schedule. Um, and so I'm a big pizza guy, whether it's New York pizza, whether it's Chicago deep dish, whether it's West Coast, whether it's Emo's up in St. Louis. Um, I'm a big – I call myself a pizza connoisseur. So uh, I get to go over to Italy where it's where it originated from and have a pizza-making class and, and smash some pizza. So uh, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most outside of the basketball. Okay, follow-up question then on that. Come on. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I've had it. It's not my favorite, if I'm being honest. I will eat it. Uh, I won't be rude if that's all that's at the party. Um, but for the most part, I'm a Supreme and a meat lovers guy, uh, the Supreme hold the black olives and, and I'm good to go. Nice. Nice. I'm a meat lovers guy. I can't stand veggies and fruit on my pizza. <laughs> so yeah, I, I feel you there. That's awesome. Well, I'll eat the veggies on pizza and try and disguise it as I'm trying to eat healthy. So that's how I kind of, <laughs> that's how I go there. That, that's your vegetable for the night. Let's just put it that way. That's your vegetable for the night. Absolutely. Oh. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what what I want to ask, you know, that when you're when a coach leaves, when a coach departs for another job, you know, the staff that he's had at the previous school, they're kind of up in arms like what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to stick around? Am I you know, like what is that process? What was that process like for you because I'm sure that he probably wanted to take you to West Virginia, but you also want to be a head coach. So you're like balancing it's like a balancing act, right? Like you got to make a decision and you can't let things drag out. Like what, what was that like for you? I'm very curious. 
Well, you know, the great thing about it is, is that, like I said, me and Mark have worked together for, for eight years. And so we've had conversations like this leading up to this in the past. And he's always asking, you know, what are your goals? What do you want to be? Um, and I, I told him I want to be a head coach. And he, you know, a couple years ago, he's like, if I got a job, would you be the head coach at SFA or would you come with me? I was like, I'm going to try and be the head coach at SFA. And if I can't, then I'm coming with you. And so uh, once he announced that he had West Virginia, he already knew in his mind that I was going to go all in after Stephen F. Austin. And uh, if I couldn't get it, then he was going to have a home for me at West Virginia. Um, and that's kudos to him. Um, he could easily just kind of go on and do his own thing. But, you know, we built it up at, at Stephen F. Austin and he gave me an opportunity to come with him to West Virginia. But he also spoke highly of me to help me get the job at Stephen F. Austin. And so uh, he's a Hall of Fame coach one day and he's already a Hall of Fame person in my mind. So, again, that's just kind of how that went for us. So the, the moment he announced it, you know, I was already working on getting my stuff in and applying for the job. When, 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 when Ryan, Ivey Ryan Ivey introduced you to the team, were you expecting that reaction from Tyler and the rest of the girls? Like, she came up and literally gave you a huge hug right there after you walked through that door. Were you expecting right. that? Um, to be, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting them to be happy for me and things like that. Because, again, um, as the assistant coach, you know, you put a lot of time in with the individual kids. You put a lot of time in with them in the gym um, in those unseen hours. So um, her to be happy for my success, I was not – I wasn't surprised by that. Now, the big bear hug and the tears and all of that, um, you know, I was I was surprised by that a little bit. But at the same time, emotions were high, and, and I get it. Daryl, go ahead with your question. Go ahead with your question. Um, you know, when you got the job, how hard was it for you to assemble your staff? You brought over Patrick Harrison from New Mexico State as your associate head coach, and then the rest of your staff. How hard was it, and then how quickly did all those hires come together? Man, uh, that's a great question. Um, it was hard. Uh, like, that was the, probably the hardest part for me, um, just because now you're going to be entrusting people that you may not know all that well or that, you you know, you've seen recruiting, but you don't know them. Um, for them to really be essential in your success. And so uh, you brought up Patrick Harrison. Um, me and him didn't know each other that well, to be honest. We'd seen each other on the road, talking, recruiting, things like that, but we didn't know each other um, like friend-to-friend -friend relationship. Um, you know, Jordan Hernandez, um, I had recruited her um, for a little bit while we were at Stephen F. Austin, and then she ultimately went to UTA. And then uh, Coach Murphy uh, was at UTEP. And uh, she she coached at A&M Commerce. Um, I'm an A&M Commerce alum. So there's that connection there. And so um, I that's probably the time I took the most um, was making sure I was good with our staff. Um, because, again, the great thing about my job is I get to pick the people I'm around every day from recruits to to coaches. Looks like the video froze up for a minute. Hello. Yep. Can you hear us? I can hear you. I can hear you the whole time. I don't okay, know what's going on. It blanked out. <laughs> it's all that humidity in Nacogdoches. That's all. It, it is hot. I will say that. It's like, uh, what's I say, 105 on my dashboard right oh now. So, goodness. Wow. There you go. There you go. But, um, but no, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I hired coaches that were embodying the things that I would be preaching, um, that were willing to put in the extra time for us to be extraordinary. Um, and then this, this actually happened, uh, without me actually planning to do this, but everybody's on staff, their dad was a coach. Um, so my dad was a coach, coach Murphy, coach, uh, Joe and coach Patrick, all of our dads were coaches. So when everybody has seen what it looks like from, from behind the scenes to be a coach as well. So, um, that's just kind of how I fell into place. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so we would be remiss in uh, not if we didn't ask. Um, other than the CUSA uh, WAC Alliance games, anything about your schedule that you can uh, kind of tease us with right now? Um, you know we have uh, two return games that I'm really excited about. We got Portland coming to us. Uh, we played them two years ago at Portland, um, and then we have North Texas coming to us as well, um, along with Rice, who's uh, now in the American. So, I mean, we have some really, really good home games along with the Liberty at home and going to Middle Tennessee. So, um, 
still finishing up the the final details and the, the logistics of our schedule. Um, but I'm excited about it. It'll test us early. Um, it'll see where we're at. And then I think it, it does a good job of preparing us for WAC play. Speaking of the schedule, do you like that you have a couple of WAC games in early December, like the first week of December, and then you have like a little bit of break? Or are you kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like that split, you know, time where you just want to be in commerce play fully, you know, invested? Yeah, I, originally I didn't like it. Um, I've grown to kind of have an appreciation for it. Ask me this probably at the end of March, and I'll tell you exactly how I feel. Um, but no, I, I think it's, you know, the whack is always trying to be forward in things and think outside the box. And so moving it up a little bit, you know, again, we'll see where it takes us. Last question here. Biggest challenge that you see as you get ready for this 2023, 24 season. Um, the biggest challenge for us is just, um, you know, not getting too high and not getting too low and understanding that this is a new coach, this is a new regime, this is a new team. And so, Comparison is the thief of joy. So if we win 26 games next year, are we going to be upset? You know, like that type of mentality. Like we, we've been had, had the bar up so high for so long um, that, again, I have got to go, just come in and make sure I'm making decisions that's best for this team um, and not going off of what may have been better for the teams in the past and, and trying to make sure I'm looking forward to building up this, this team into another national powerhouse as, as it has been in the past. Leonard, we appreciate the time, and uh, we know that you get busy getting ready for Italy and getting everything put Absolutely. together for that. And, uh, and uh, Daryl, you got one. Well, Daryl, you got one. Well. Have a safe trip, guys. Hey, I appreciate the time. Hey, I appreciate uh, the time. I always uh, want to talk uh, SFA always. Lady Jack basketball. Um, so, you know, again, I'd love to be on the show again whenever you guys will have me. Um, but, again, thank you for, you know, just doing this podcast and, and drumming up interest in not only women's basketball, but whack women's basketball as well. So I, I do appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And and eat a meat lover. Make a meat lover's pizza for me while you're out over there in Italy. And, uh, you know, hopefully, I don't know if Mandy's going with you, but if Amanda Paver is going with you, make sure she takes pictures and posts them all over social media that says, Whack Hoops died to the Whack Hoops Nation guys asked him to make this meat lover's pizza. So <laughs> I'll do my best, Big Girl. I'll do my best. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Straight Out Whack Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack Podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.